Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 372, Integrative Medicine. What's in a name? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. You have people that come to your office because you you have a reputation for being on the cutting edge of changes that are happening in medicine. Mm -hmm. And, And some people come in and they want to know more about what you do. They, they know a little bit about the services, but they, they need to know how to frame it so that they can explain it to their regular doctors, mm-hmm. their neighbors, their friends, family mm-hmm. members, what have you. And so they will ask you, do you practice integrative medicine? Do you practice uh, functional medicine, holistic medicine? Well, what do you do? So you have an answer for that, and you, it often takes much longer but <laughs> to, to, answer to, the g- to get out than you, than you would think simply because mm-hmm. it's an... Uh, it's sort of a an undefined concept in a lot of the media, a lot of people's mind. There are terms that are thrown out. And they can be pejorative they, you know, or, or they can right. be positive, mm-hmm. depending on what you already know and what your biases are. So when people come in and say, well, are you holistic in your approach? There can be a real positive interpretation of that because mm-hmm. you say, I want to get you to a place where you live a healthy and functional life. Your entire life. Mm-hmm. So that's your whole life. So, yes, you could say I'm holistic. But other people say holistic, and they mean, uh, do you do... Do you take care of all of my body? Do you care, take care of every system? Do you do my auras, system? and do you do my odors, and do you, you know... But most of the time, they don't... They're not thinking of that. They're thinking of, are you taking care of all the different parts of my body and preventing preventing disease? So right now, we have... Regular medicine that treats disease. Traditional medicine. Traditional. Yeah. Traditional medicine treats disease. It's based on disease. But what they call integrative or functional medicine, it it can have lots of different definitions. But in my practice, it is cutting edge medicine that covers all different parts of your body. All different specialties are included, including endocrinology and cardiology and prevention of diabetes and prevention of um, age-related diseases like losing your muscle mass, being unable to walk, uh, osteoporosis. Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. So, so basically we are preventive medicine that covers as many of the techniques new techniques that will prevent disease and we only provide techniques that we think work well for our patients. Now having said that, the basis of our practice is hormone replacement as people get older because right. hormones go away as we get older. Right. So that's our foundation because we find that that takes over lots of other things that you would normally have to do you don't have to do if you replace your hormones. Well, so we that cut whole, to the chase. Lots of other things is part of where the debate arises. And uh, I used to be a high school and college debater, and we were mm-hmm. trained that what, in, in formal educational debate, there's always a proposal, a topic that you mm-hmm. have to either advocate for or against the topic and build a case one way or the other. But they always told us that it's important in an educational debate to begin with the definition of terms. So you have to define the terminology that you're going to be using with an agreement between the two teams to say, mm-hmm. this is when we say the word nuclear test ban treaty, we mean this. Mm-hmm. And do you agree that we mean this? And so they get an agreement on terms. Mm-hmm. Then the affirmative team, the, the ones that are for the proposal, they have to build an argument or a case saying whatever the proposition calls for. And then the negative team comes up and says, Okay, we don't agree, and here's why. And they have mm-hmm. to build a case for not doing what the proposition calls for. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of those two formal presentations, then you have cross-examination and rebuttal where you challenge people's facts, you challenge their evidence, you challenge their reasoning, you challenge their delivery, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And then a judge says, well, you did a better job. 
here's a checklist. That's not the way it works in medicine, but there are debates in medicine mm -hmm. that, that the medical professionals who are uh, passionate about their work, who are invested in their work, who want to believe that their work accomplishes good for mm -hmm. people. And, it does. and God bless them for doing that. Mm -hmm. But they disagree among themselves and sometimes vehemently, sometimes vociferously about what is the right thing to do. And so part of that is because there's not a common terminology, I think. That there is yeah, a debate in medicine today about whether the focus of medicine should be on preventive medicine mm -hmm. and a, a, a look at how to treat diseases or if the focus of medicine be, should be on identifying symptoms that signify something and treat those symptoms. Like if you've got a fever or an infection. I think it's different. I think it's, I think it is the difference between treating disease and preventing disease. Okay. I think that's the debate. So, so that's the definition of terms. What do you mean by that? I think that's, that? that's the debate between medicine currently is, do we spend all of our time, money, educating doctors on how to treat a disease once it's happened and how to make people better, which of course we need, mm -hmm. or do we cut the training on that and add preventive medicine? And so I think that um, what they call functional or integrative medicine is a backlash against just treating disease. It is another way to take care of patients by preventing the disease before it happens. Okay. So, so you can anticipate that I am going to be susceptible to a particular disease and you use traditional medical tools like blood tests, mm -hmm. x-rays, CAT scans, what have you. Uh, but you also look beyond that to my genetics to my non-traditional tools, yeah. non-traditional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you look at my stress levels, mm -hmm. you look at my emotional stability, your diet, my diet, your my exercise, exercise program. Yeah. All those things get included with the traditional data points that you look at. Right. And so I'm looking at, I also look at disease at the same time. I mean, I mm -hmm. have to know what diseases you have and many of the things we do preventively or globally, I guess you could say holistically are things that will help the disease that you have become better or need you would need less medicines or less treatment for it. However, in general, we're just trying to keep people healthy. As they age, when we get unhealthy, generally we don't get become unhealthy as a group until we're over 45 or 50. But incorporating all of that in the approach to looking at a patient and their health. Mm -hmm. By definition, it means that you are open to a new paradigm yes. in medicine, a new mm -hmm. way of, of uh, explaining what you do, of mm -hmm. understanding what you're trying to do it. And you belong to two different professional organizations that encompass literally tens of thousands of doctors mm -hmm. around the globe who all have come together to emphasize this new paradigm in their practices. Mm -hmm. But there are hundreds of thousands of doctors around the globe who have not made that leap to mm -hmm. a new paradigm. And they are still practicing medicine and approaching medicine the way that they were trained, which 10, 20, 30 years ago was uh, much more stultified, solidified as it focused on identifying symptoms, resolving the symptoms, making a diagnosis, taking away the pain. And fixing away. it. Yes. Fix that thing. That one thing. The one thing that's right in front and of And it doesn't matter what it does elsewhere. Like, yeah. for example... Well, I remember going to doctor's offices where the doctor's smoking. I know, but that's a way back. Uh, way back, but it's that's an so old. No that's, one that's listening can remember. But they, but it's a vivid. It helps give clarity to the discussion. Right, but that's or, not what doctors. Doctor I don't that, want to accuse doctors of smoking and not following their own advice. So the doctors that take care of disease, we need them. Yeah. That is that is not the issue. It's just that the doctors that take care of disease are very skeptical and critical of the doctors that are trying to prevent it. Right. So the new wave, just like any new wave, right. is controversial. And it is something that, you know, you hear one doctor going, I wish I, I wish I could turn that guy over to the, you know, because he treated this differently. differently. Well, did it work? Yeah. Well, yeah, it did. Well, then what's the problem? You know, they don't look at the outcome. He, he uses that, <laughs> that prescription off-label. Right. The FDA says that is a prescription for this. And that's the only time you're supposed to use it. Well, if I have a hammer, <laughs> if I have a hammer and it's meant to put nails in, but I turn it over and I take nails out, does that mean I shouldn't take nails out because the hammer was meant to put nails in? 
I mean, that's the idea of an off-label drug. It works for many things, and doctors are educated so that we understand what it works for and right. the implications of the side effects and what what's going to happen down the line to the other systems. Well, and that is where you use your judgment. Mm -hmm. You use the science. You use the data. All the research that was done by the drug company to, to make that drug and get it approved through the approval But process. also the physiology of what it's treating. You have right. to understand... Many doctors kind of gloss over physiology. They forget about it. But how does the physiology is how your body works in response to something. Uh -huh. So we're taught pharmacology, which is the, the study of drugs and how it works on physiology. So you can go from there to see how it's going to affect all the other systems in your body anytime you prescribe a drug. So I like to know what a drug does to everything before I prescribe it. But that's not how I was cha trained. You know, I, I have several friends who are physicians, and it always amazes me when I can ask a question about a generic drug, and they literally recite a pharmacological treatise from the top of their head about, oh, that's in this class of mm -hmm. drugs. There are five different brand names that you can use. This one has this side effect. This mm -hmm. one. I mean, they know all that stuff. Well, that's those are our tools. That, uh, yes, and it's impressive. Right. And yet, sometimes doctors start to use one of those drugs off-label mm -hmm. in a non-traditional way because they see something. Because we know what it's doing and we know what it could be used for when we don't have anything else. Yes. And you legally are entitled to do that. Sure. That, is, that, do that. is not illegal. It's no, just off-label. But it just means you have to think and but, you have to you have to have the guts to defend yourself against other doctors going, well, that doesn't work because but, they don't understand it or haven't thought it through. But in the paradigm debate, Yes. Many of those doctors say, well, that's not right. That's not legal. They shouldn't be doing that. Every doctor uses drugs off-label whether they think so or not. Things they were trained with, they use off-label. So that's my argument back to them. No, you have consistently maintained that. I mean, we, we've done a lot of these conversations mm -hmm. in which you say mm -hmm. exactly that. But today what we're talking about is the divide that is appearing, the crack, in the way people understand and approach medicine. And mm -hmm. so you get people that come to your office and say, well, are you disease focused? Are you symptom focused? Are you holistic? Are you, uh, do you practice complementary medicine? Mm -hmm. Do you pa practice functional medicine, alternative mm -hmm. medicine? And the terminology is part of what leads to the confusion. Right. And every, every one of these different types of medicine has its own specific definition. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had to look at all their definitions, uh, integrative medicine would be the most, most descriptive of what I do because I use some endocrinology. I prevent disease by using hormones, but I also prevent heart disease and diabetes by using medication, di uh, exercise, diet, supplements, other things that aren't traditional. And I'm trying to prevent those things. I, I do tests that aren't traditional, like the the um, cardiac calcium scan, where you go in and you get a two shot CAT scan, and they tell you whether you have plaque on the on the vessels of your heart. Okay. So that tells you what the rest of your body looks like, but more importantly, what your heart looks like, and are you an impending risk for a heart attack? Has this has that statin you took for forty years worked? So, so that two shot scan mm -hmm. will project uh, to the rest of your body to say, okay, if you've got plaque in this location, you you're going to have it everywhere. It. Okay. So that gives me just a little test and that's not covered by insurance. Right. And that's not accepted by the uh, cardiology. Because it's American, preventive. Because it's preventive. Basically, we're just finding out what's your status. Because when a doctor does a, a stress test, you could still have a heart attack the next day because you could have plaque all over your heart. Right. But you just survived the stress test. Right. It didn't cause your heart to malfunction at that time, but it might later. If you get cold, your vessels shrink, and then there's plaque in them, and they and don't so get you, blood through if it. If you identify that I have plaque mm -hmm. built up in my heart, mm -hmm. are there things that you can then do absent surgery yes. to help reduce that or to eliminate that? Yeah, and that's, and that's what we do. We use supplements. We use exercise. We use diet. We use medications mm -hmm. to try to dissolve the, the plaque in, in the vessels, and you can do that. Yes. And if you ask a, regu a doctor who's, who's a middle-of-the-road cardiologist, he'd say, no, that doesn't work. It does. Okay. I mean, when you put people, when you put women on estrogen, when they are within the 10 years after menopause, 
and they have plaque, when you check them two years later, they don't have as much plaque. Right. So you can study this and watch the plaque go away. So this, these are things that are in, they're researched, they're in many of these journals, but if they're in a journal, it doesn't necessarily mean that that specialty of medicine embraces it. But what, but my, my goal is even more far reaching than that. My goal is to have different types of medicine where you see a cardiologist, he talks to you just about your heart mm -hmm. or your vessels. And then you see an endocrinologist or your gynecologist and they talk about hormones, but not about the other. And then they don't, you know, so no one accepts all of these preventive things in one place. That's what integrative medicine, integrative meaning integrating all the different specialties so do you in think a preventive way. If, if this integrative approach of being open to new to incorporating new paradigms mm -hmm. into your practice or your mm -hmm. understanding of what to do, do you think that will lead us in the direction of fewer specialists and more generalists as, as these physicians who use this broader or multiple paradigm focus begin to populate the, the medical community? Only if insurance will pay for it. And that's the problem because insurance is lagging behind everything. They still pay for illness, but they don't necessarily pay for wellness care. They don't pay for obesity care. They, you know, they don't right. pay for obese, anti-obesity medicines to help you lose weight. They, that's outside. You got to pay cash for that. Right. And you have to pay cash for the treatment that a functional medicine, integrative medicine, complementary medicine, Even all of those people. Even though save them money. If, if they paid for the anti-obesity medicine and people lost weight, it would save them money in terms of outlays for strokes and heart attacks. Well, only and, if you look down 10 years. And yeah. they don't look more than three months. Okay. They look at the next the quarter. The next board report. It's a, it's a business. It's not a, when they say health maintenance organization, right. that doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't mean they're maintaining your health because they're not. They're just treating your diseases and they're apportioning care where they think they can spend it and still make a bunch of money. So they're not maintaining your health. That's what we're really talking about is maintaining health. But what the, the uh, labels they've used are very misleading. Right. And so you, they, everybody thinks you belong to a health maintenance organization, you're going to be healthy. Right. Well, that's not true. They're just an insurance company. That's all they are. They're the ones dealing out money and saying whether they're going to pay for one of your treatments or your drugs or not. Right. So they're not really and they decide trying to help your health. What, what medicines or, or services to provide for you to mm -hmm. pay for will cover that procedure mm -hmm. based on their bottom line, not your health. Right. So sometimes we choose supplements that are much cheaper than you pay. I mean, much cheaper by a factor of 10 than you putting you actually – Buying a drug yourself or even paying the copay yeah. right. for something for inflammation like Celebrex, if you pay for it yourself for three months, is like $1,200. So insurance pays for it. It's still a couple hundred dollars a month. If right. you pay for Curcumax, which is curcumin and several other herbs that decrease inflammation, that's like mm, $30 a month. So so sometimes... It, it works the same way. It has we, the same effect. It isn't as strong, but it works the same way. Okay. So it's an anti-inflammatory. So you could try. It doesn't work for everyone. Neither one does. But, but, but I would but, want to find a doctor that knows that. Right. And that will suggest that to me as a treatment protocol in time for it to make a difference. Right. And and actually, it takes that kind of interpretation because mm -hmm. everyone on the Internet is trying to sell everything for everything. And that doesn't necessarily mean it works. So by going to an integrative physician, my hope would be that they would have tested it tried it, found the best brand that you should use mm -hmm. so that it actually will work instead of a medicine. Mm -hmm. So we see people with high cortisol. High cortisol causes, when you, you have too much cortisol, you basically are shutting down your system of killing cancer cells or killing bacteria or killing viruses. So you get sick more often. I mean, you don't have allergies, but but the stress of life brings your cortisol up that we find on our, on our blood tests. So we, you could treat with prednisone, which is ridiculous to give you more cortisol in a fashion that has side effects, or we use animal adrenal. A small dose of animal adrenal feeds back to your brain and shuts those pulses down so that your cortisol is not as high, which means you can fight cancer better. You can fight bacteria better. So it's the doctors that do this either have learned on their own or have 
gone and been trained, and we always go for training over yes. and over and over again to right. find the newest, best, simplest methods to treat things or to prevent things. Right. So, uh, so you have to have a doctor who's actively interested in making you Still better. Still growing and learning. It's that paradigm thing. Right. And, and in traditional medicine, now you get CMEs, you go to continuing medical education, and you learn a few new techniques, but it's usually about techniques. It's not usually about fixing, I mean, completely revamping how you treat a disease or finding well, an alternative. Or it's about your CMEs are about things like the HIPAA law changed. Right. And yeah. so we have to learn how to keep paperwork. It's not really about learning more It's not more always about, about medicine. medicine. Yeah. But it's always in your specialty. Yeah. So if I'm an OBGYN, I learn mostly about OB, which I don't do anymore, and hardly anything about hormones because they're not that interested in in women as they age. They're only a little interested in women as they age. Mm -hmm. So there's a gap. So integrative medicine covers that gap. Can fill the gap. Can yeah. So there's a lot of different uses for integrative medicine. It's It's basically we have a need and we're filling the need with integrative medicine. But you have to be sure of what your doctor is going to treat you for. And you kind of have to go to their website and see, because there are some people who call themselves that, that may not, they probably don't use hormones necessarily, because that's a little harder to manage, but they might give you something for yeast. Well, everybody has yeast in their gut, by the way. So you don't, and you don't always have to get rid of the yeast in your gut unless it's it's killing off all the other bacteria. Is that the detox approach to detoxifying? Yeah, there's, the yeah. I mean, our liver and kidneys detox us 24-7, right. but, but detoxing sometimes for certain people is, is important. That's not something that I do. I refer to people to do that because it's not part of what most of my patients need. Like After hormones. Yeah. yeah, well, most of, you know, the hormones cover a lot of issues and fix a lot of things that I don't need to fix then. Right. So it, it really does help you run like a car that's a lot younger than it is. So at the end of the day, what we come to, again, is the message to you that it is critically important for you to be an active participant in your own health care decisions. Do your research. Talk to your physician. Ask questions. Don't just go in and be a passive recipient of whatever they think they need to do to treat your symptom. That's right. Look, and, look at your whole lifestyle. And, and many people need some of these other complementary things like acupuncture and things like that. But, right. but if your doctor is really up on everything, we refer for those things. If we don't do them, don't we refer do, for them. Right, right. If you don't do acupuncture, but you think this might be a valid uh, intervention here, mm -hmm. uh, you refer to an acupuncturist. Right. 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 And I do that. So yes. those are, those are things that they should be open-minded. And if you go to a doctor who runs their practice and everyone else usually is on the same page because that doctor has changed the culture of their practice and everybody who works there, who is treating you is in the same general vicinity of how things should be done. Right. We use protocols Doctors usually use protocols so that you know what you're getting when you get there. And you create networks of like-minded physicians yes. that you trust. I mean, we have situations where patients come to you and say, my doctor said you were going to kill me because you're <laughs> replacing my hormones. So you refer that patient to other doctors who embrace the concept right. of hormone replacement. Yeah, who are, who are on board with this and will work with us. Because you don't want that conflict dynamic or that tension in the added stress on the patient. No, the patient ends up in the middle. Yeah. And any times, I mean, I'm not sure if I've ever said those words, that somebody would kill, kill some. I mean, but but some doctors are some just doctors so say that. unknowledgeable right. about what is being done. Or they're so invested in the old paradigm yeah. and unwilling to consider a new paradigm. But there's a lot of new information out there. The research is exploding exponentially. The last 10, 15 years, it is phenomenal, especially in these areas of integrative medicine, holistic medicine, uh, bioidentical medicine. I mean, the, the terms that we try to define. Because if you don't have an answer right now, you yeah. need to find an answer. And that's how we're finding answers. We're not finding answers through the old system. We're finding answers through the new system. None of us wants to end up in a nursing home. So keep looking and keep listening. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.